Boko enjoyed taking the night goods. The evening air was crisp, and it was nice running with no other engines around. Best of all, the trucks were too busy sleeping to cause any mischief. One foggy evening, he arrived on the other railway right on time. He parked his trucks and made his way to the shed. The yard was big, but Boko never had any trouble finding his way. Tonight, however, the fog was so thick he had completely lost his bearings. Strange, he muttered to himself. I'm certain the sheds were around here. Suddenly, Boko could see the outline of a building ahead. Finally, he smiled. His relief was short-lived. As he drew closer, he saw it wasn't the big shed where the mainland diesels slept. It was smaller and more akin to the old sheds on Sodor. It was shabby and looked as if it had been vacant for a long time. A shed's a shed, old fellow, sighed his driver. We'll go mad trying to find our way in this fog any longer. Boko was uneasy. Something felt odd. But he didn't want to navigate through the fog any further. He rolled silently into the shed and said goodnight to his driver. Now, Boko was alone. He stared out into the yard. All was silent. No trucks being pushed around, not even the distant sound of diesel horns. It was as if the fog muffled the world around him. Why, hello! Boko jumped. Beside him was an old tender engine. It's not often I have visitors, he said in a warm but weary tone. At last, Boko found his voice. Uh, I'm sorry, he stuttered. I didn't mean to intrude. My driver and I got lost in the fog and... No need to apologize, chuckled the engine. Fog can lead you places you don't expect to be. Besides, it's nice to have company for a change. Well, thank you, smiled Boko. I must admit, I am surprised. I've been taking the night goods for years, but I've never seen this shed before. Or you, for that matter. The old engine chuckled again. You're not the only one. Seems I'm invisible to most who work here. The engine eyed Boko up and down. You're a Sodor engine, aren't you? How did you know? You're different from the diesels that live around these parts. Much more courteous for a start. I was a Sodor engine too, many moons ago. Boko was surprised. Yes, it's true, laughed the engine, spying the look of shock on Boko's face. Used to work at the big station. Lovely place it was. The engine sighed and looked down at his buffers. Oh, only wish I'd appreciated it more at the time. Why don't you return? asked Boko. I'm sure the fat controller would welcome you back with open arms. Oh, no, stammered the engine. He didn't have the patience for an engine like me. Nonsense, smiled Boko. He certainly wouldn't want to see you in a state like this. Tell you what, come back with me tomorrow. The old engine ignored this. Tell me, he asked, is Edward still around? Oh, yes, replied Boko. I work on his branch line. Ah, I am glad to hear it, smiled the engine. A kind soul he was. I only wish I'd been as kind to him. What did you say your name was? asked Boko. Oh, it's getting late, yawned the old engine. We'd better get some sleep now. We'll finish our chat in the morning. Boko was curious why the engine wouldn't answer his question but had to admit he was feeling drowsy, and it wasn't long before he fell asleep. 
Boko's sleep was anything but peaceful. All night long, he dreamt of scrapyards. Old engines were lined up in the sidings, their shadows dancing in the flicker of the cutter's torch. The violent red light illuminated the inside of a shed, and all Boko could hear were the muffled pleas for mercy, drowned in the sound of searing metal. Boko woke with a start. It was daylight now, the fog burned off by the morning sun. He breathed a sigh of relief that his dream was over. And I hope I didn't keep you up, he said, addressing the old engine. I had an awful... He stopped. The old engine and the shed were gone. But, but stuttered Boko, where's the shed and the engine? When Boko's driver arrived, he was surprised too. Sheds don't just disappear, he said, scratching his head. Boko set off for home with much on his mind. He didn't know what to make of the old engine, the disappearing shed, or his dream. He did know, however, that he'd be having a long talk with Edward.